Hello everybody, I'm George from Ireland and this video is to proclaim victory for, uh, for Joe Biden. Thankfully, the former vice president has won the presidency of the United States and unlike Donald J. Trump, I didn't jump the gun and proclaim it before it was clear and Joe Biden himself didn't say he's won until it's uh, um, sure that he really has won. So um, uh, the vast majority of the votes are in and in many states it's over 99%. I'm not sure there's a single state that's got to 100% yet because some of the overseas ballots are coming in. Remember, American citizens living abroad are entitled to vote. Military personnel, their ballots are coming in and um, so Joe Biden has comported himself with his characteristic dignity and uh, Donald Trump has misconducted himself in his trademark manner, an utterly asinine and shameful manner. So um, <clears throat> it may, may seem like a narrow win, but it isn't really. Joe Biden's won a triple majority. He's won a majority in the uh, Electoral College, and that's what counts. He's won a majority of the popular vote, almost 51% of the vote. And a lot of American presidents haven't won the popular vote, not because like Joe, not because like um, Trump, they were less popular than their opponent, but because there were three or more significant candidates. Um, you go back to the days of the, the Bull Moose Party or even when Ross Perot was around 19% in 1992 for the Reform Party or in the 19th century when the Whigs were around. Um, so um, this is a, this is um, a triumph for the Democrats, even though the uh, the margin of victory wasn't that great, because the, the Democrats have won the popular vote in the presidential elections seven times out of the last eight. Um, so a triple triple majority, as I said, majority of the Electoral College, majority of the popular vote, and indeed the majority of the states, 26 states plus Washington, D.C. So it'll be 27 out of 51. And yes, I know Washington, D.C. is not a state. Um, and then it's not quite clear the last two. Um, well, because North Carolina is not quite finished, but um, almost certainly um, uh, Donald Trump's going to get that one. Alaska, you know, they're still just 56 percent of the vote they've counted. But uh, there's no way Joe Biden can win that one. But anyway, so Biden has won the majority of the states, which you don't need to. But it's just another uh, example of how he has won a comprehensive victory, even if it's not by um, a huge amount. He's won four million votes more than than, um, than Donald Trump. He's won the popular vote by three percentage points. Remember, under Hillary, it was only two percentage points. Um, anyway, so the margins were slimmer than was forecast. Now, remember where you heard it first. Look back to my video a few days ago, and I was saying that um, Joe Biden would win the popular vote by six percentage points. He's won by three percentage points. So the polar poll said eight percentage points. I was closer than the polar polls. Now, a lot of these Republican so-called pundits were saying that Trump was going to win the popular vote. Well, they were dead wrong. Even if he had a win by one percent, I was closer at only three percentage points out to that one percent for Trump, which would be four percentage points out. So um, anyway, the uh, the opinion polls, well, they've been left with egg on their face um, because uh, remember the punditry was was not that accurate last time. Not terrible, really. You know, two percent out in the poll polls. That's at the margin of error, and so they really strove to correct for any systemic errors in their their sampling, like I'm um, asking too many graduates who you intend to vote for college graduates because that skewed it too much towards Hillary because college graduates were. Um, significantly more likely to cast a ballot for Hillary Clinton than they were for Donald J. Trump. Um, but despite having um, uh, really tried to correct um, any any error there, it hasn't worked. So I think the timid Trumpster factor is there. Democrats often underperform because turnout is more problematic for them. So it is Elysian that Trump has been rejected. He's been rebuked from his racism, his mismanagement, his lassitude, his chronic mendacity. He's just a pathological liar. He's utterly vile. And now this is this is really a victory for the civilized world, um, for the forces of reason and the enlightenment, because Trump represents all that's worst in any nation. He's almost like the, the incarnation of idiocy. Um, he's so malicious. Um, he is uh, just so um, conceited, ultra-crepidarian, vile, 
um, bigoted and proud of it, just the lowest of the low, just utterly repulsive. Uh, you know, um, and I used to have a lot of time for Nigel Farage, that British politician. Farage going there to disgrace himself by saying that uh, Trump is the bravest person he's ever met. Trump is not brave, not morally, not physically. He's detestable. When has he ever taken a morally brave stance, which is going to cost him amongst people he cares about or suffered any disadvantage, made the tiniest sacrifice. You know, remember when George Papadopoulos questioned him last time saying, you know, you scorn that gold star family uh, whose, whose son was killed fighting for the United States, a Muslim American killed fighting for America. And, and they made sacrifices. What sacrifices have you made? And Trump says, well, I paid for whatever the health insurance of my workers. And Papadopoulos said, are those sacrifices? You were legally obliged to pay them. I mean, you didn't usually even um, fulfill his uh, legal obligations. We know about Trump uh, University, so-called university, and just yet yeah, another flagrant fraud by this outright con man who should have been behind bars decades ago. So uh, although um, it's not a resounding victory for the Democrats, um, uh, there are crumbs of comfort, like I said, more than crumbs of comfort about winning the popular vote seven times out of eight and so on, recapturing those uh, vital blue wall states of uh, Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, of course, the fifth most populous state in the union. You know, possibly uh, North Carolina, that's not going to change anything. It's going to identify some of the Democrat targets for next time. Um, would be would be North Carolina, Georgia is not in yet. Um, looks like it's going to Joe Biden. I mean, that's a racing certainty. Um, Florida, which uh, Trump um, actually improved on, he won 51% uh, of the vote there. So Biden actually did worse than Hillary this time. So uh, 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 Trump won that by 3.4%. And then Texas, where, where Trump won by only, um, well, not quite six percentage points. So, um, and um, then near the Great Lakes region, well, then there's Indiana, which Trump won by only, um, uh, well, let me see, eight percentage points, and Iowa, which uh, Trump won by only uh, eight percentage points again. And so, so five um, targets for the Demo for the Democrats. Um, I'm not saying that Democrats will win all of them, might not win any of them, but they're realistic. If the Republicans win by only 10%, by 10 percentage points or less, the Democrats have a serious chance of taking them. If the, if the Republicans win by over 10%, it's unrealistic to think that the Democrats could take the next time. And just think, if the Democrats win either Texas or Florida, really it's all over for the Republicans. I mean, not forever. But that's coming. That's landslide territory because um those are so large in 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 population. You know, Texas, the um second most populous state in the United States, and uh, Florida, the uh the, the third, if I've got that right, um because you know of the big four, there's California, New York, uh, Texas, and Florida, in um uh well not quite that order. California being the first, but you need to win two of those to win overall. If you win at only one of those then it's almost impossible to win overall. You need to win almost every other state. And so in, in, in this time, the Democrats have won two of the large states, the Republicans have won two of the large states. Um, so uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so in the, in the um, Great Lakes region, the Democrats could win a couple more states. And then apart from that, um, uh, really the Midwest is, is really the, the heartland for the Republicans. You see the inbuilt advantage of the Republicans. Of the five smallest states in population, four of them are reliably Republican. And this is how unfair it is. Wyoming, with about 350,000 people, that is the safest Republican state, where they won a whopping 70% of the vote. Um, so remember how the Electoral College works. Each state gets a number of electoral votes equal to its congressional delegation, as in two senators per state, regardless of population, and then at least one representative um, per state, again, regardless of population, because let's say Wyoming and um, and uh, like Montana are so tiny, really they should have to share a representative of the, of the two Dakotas or something like that. Um, uh, so it skews it towards a smaller state, the argument being, well, otherwise the tiny states would get disregarded. I say tiny, very, very low population density. Well, they wouldn't be. They wouldn't be ignored. They would get enough attention that's commensurate to their population. But okay, this goes back to the foundation of the United States. It was all about states' rights, uh, not people. Um, anyway, so um, uh, carrying on. No wonder the Republicans want to 
keep the United States in the 18th century because this is a system that favours them. There was high turnout, and there are some worrying things about the Democrats. High turnout tends to favour the Democrats. Yes, they've won, but not by the um, convincing majority that they should have won, um, because uh, high turnout tends to favour the Democrats. And the problem for the Democrats is always motivating their supporters to vote. The Republicans have um, Christian fundamentalists as a core constituency, and these evangelicals, they're highly actuated and organised, and so that's why they're very disciplined at voting. Um, now, the, the um, erstwhile Confederacy was um, really the um, heartland for the Republicans, that in the Midwest. Of the 11 former Confederate states, um, the, the uh, uh, Democrats have captured, um, well, um, Virginia and uh, Georgia. Um, and possibly, possibly uh, North Carolina. So of those eleven, looks like the, um, uh, the 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 Republicans have nine of the eleven, maybe even eight of the eleven. So that's no longer the solid South. In some some elections in recent years, all eleven former Confederate states were um, uh, were won by the Republican Party. Oh, okay, there's West Virginia, which was part of Virginia, but was admitted to the Union as a separate state in 1862. So do you count that as the, as the South or not, or the former Confederacy or not? I mean, is Kentucky a southern state or not? Again, it's debatable. It's a border state. Had slavery in 1861, but remained true to the Union. Uh, likewise, um, uh, Missouri. Okay, so um, uh, we'll carry on a little bit. So um, the Blue Wall has stayed with the Democrats, but by, by razor-thin margins. Now, in the Senate, it's not looking so good. Not all the results are in. So um, 49 Democrats, 48 uh, Republicans. Um, I, I predicted that the um, Democrats would get um, uh, 50, 50 senatorial seats. Sorry, it's 48, 48, even Stevens at the moment. But the two, um, there could be a runoff election in Georgia the 5th of January because um, there, was no, there was no decisive winner. So I predict that the, the Democrats are going to win one of those. going to be 49 for the um, uh for the Democrats, 49 for the Republicans, and two independents. And of course, the vice president will cast the um, deciding vote in the case of that house being equally divided as provided for by the United States Constitution. Um, so Democrats have often talked about demographic changes, and because of that, uh, the Republicans might never win again. So demographic changes are slow. Yes, things are shifting the way the, the, of the Democrats, but... Um, they, they can still lose, as last time showed. They could even still lose the popular vote. A particularly credible um, Republican candidate, a feeble Democratic candidate, a bad situation. They, 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 the Democrats could lose the popular vote um, because um, whites, um, non-Hispanic whites, are declining as a percentage of the population. Roughly 60% of the populace at the moment uh, predicted to reach 50% of the population by 20. 45. But um, the Republicans have made, have made greater inroads against Hispanic people even this time. African Americans, Trump, um, despite his flagrant racialism, has done better with African Americans getting 9% of the African American vote. That's almost double what George W. Bush got. Um, but uh, because African Americans, they're not immune from appeals to xenophobia, from Islamophobia, from uh, misogynism, which appeals to some people from faux toughness, um, from anti-Arab bigotry, and all the things that Trump has to sell. Um, and some people are duped by his lies. Uh, what else? And um, Hispanic identity isn't always that strong. And okay, you're not just voting with your um, uh, ethnic and linguistic identity. Um, you might actually genuinely approve his policies and be anti-abortion and so on. Not that Trump is um, genuinely anti-abortion, not that he would care about it. I'm not saying he's pro-abortion, just doesn't care either way. He would say anything for his personal advancement. Um, who is purblind enough to think he's a principled anti-abortion, who was pro-abortion uh, until, um, until about the age of 70, who are uh, donated to the most... Um, zealously pro-abortion couple in the United States, the Clintons, who are now the root of all evil, according to Republicans, who was a registered Democrat when this was an article for faith for Democrats. So he's not anti-abortion. You'd have to be uh, particularly moronic to believe that. Um, he, you know, he's not even Republican, he's not a conservative. He would be anything. He'd be a communist if he thought that would help his self-aggrandizement. Not who understands what communism or conservatism is. So, um, 
Trump is vile. Remember his blatant lies. 2016, he said the Republican nomination was rigged, but he won it. So it can't have been rigged against him. He said the whole election was rigged in 2016, in which case withdraw. Don't legitimize it by your participation. You can't have it both ways. If, if, if you participate, you don't believe it's rigged. And then he won that anyway. If anything is rigged in his favor, not illegally rigged, but the whole system is unfair, it's slanted towards the Republicans who perform more strongly in the less densely populated states, saying that this election was rigged, getting his excuses in early because yet again he expected to lose once he was right about something. Um, so a, a defeat for him. Um, and um, so he started lying hours after the polls closed, getting his excuses in early, his narrative that there were loads of bogus votes. Remember, he claimed that he won the popular vote last time once you deduct the um, foreigners who voted for Hillary Clinton. You know, yet another blatant, stinking lie. I'm not aware of a single foreigner who voted for Hillary Clinton. Uh, are there any? Tell me if there are. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think it was very, very few. It's not close to three million like he would have us believe. So just an outrageous lie. Um, and yet Republicans don't call him out on that. There are enough useful idiots who will fall for these flagrant falsehoods. So Trump demanding that the voting must stop several hours after the polls had closed in every state. Where was voting carrying on? Nowhere. OK, so again, that was another um, shocking mistruth he was telling, the suggestion that voting was carrying on, so the counting must stop. Why? It always takes a few days, even a few weeks, in any presidential election, going right back to the foundation of the United States. The overseas ballots, oh, those are for the military, so he doesn't want the military to vote? Some friend of the troops he is. Um, again, it, it always um, puzzles me and disgusts me that um, uh, military people and veterans should vote for Trump. Trump, who scorned John McCain, saying, you know, that he was a loser, he shouldn't have got captured. Now, whatever you think of John McCain's politics, there's no doubt about his moral and physical courage, which was um, gigantic. There, tortured horrifically in that Vietnamese uh, prisoner of war cell, and refused the opportunity to go home to his wife and children. His greater loyalty was the United States. I would have been out there like a shot, and you can bet Trump would have been. Um, why would you stick with a man who's um, so scornful towards veterans and towards Americans who've been killed uh, serving their country valiantly? Wow. Um, Trump, who said that uh, avoiding sexually transmitted diseases in the 70s was his Vietnam. How self-indulgent is that? Anyway, that the counting must stop. And then Trump demanding the counting must start or even restart in states where he thought it could advantage him. So this is really the height of illogicality. It's grossly self-contradictory, but it is consistent. The principle here is whatever he thinks will redound to his advantage. Um, this is Wednesbury irrationality. So um, anyway, Wisconsin has gone for Biden. That's part of the blue wall, which has come back to the Democrats. But it's not a secure blue wall. They need to build that one higher. So um, anyway, every low down dirty trick Trump uh, will try. He is damnably foul. And see what Donald Jr. said that, the, that his president, his father should fight an absolute war over this. A metaphorical, I hope, but there are a lot of um, uh, imbeciles on the Republican side who won't see it that way. Turning up to polling stations with assault rifles. How is that not intimidation? Demanding to be led into counts, even when, um, you know, there's been no agreement. They're not some sort of election observers. So um, it's just um, shocking and uh, nauseating. So the xenophobia, the false accusations of non-citizens voting. Trump with his torpor, with his rampageous lying, this um, fascist gargoyle has still garnered so many votes. And that's the dispiriting aspect of this election. Trump um, has got a higher percentage of the vote than he did last time. Has got, is it 67 million votes? He got more votes than Hillary Clinton did last time. Now, Trump fools you once, um, shame on him. If he fools you twice, shame on you. Who could be so um, completely stupid as to trust him after all he's done, drain the swamp, drain the swamp. You follow his record over the trail of broken promises that he was going to build that wall, that Mexico was going to pay a penny for it, that he's going to withdraw the troops from Syria and from Iraq and from Afghanistan, and America's going to get tired of winning, and that he was going to make fund Medicare, and he's going to fund Medicaid, and medicines would get better, and they would get cheaper, um, and, 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 and he was going to win the trade war, and he was going to bring back the the um, jobs from overseas. Lies, all of them lies. 
absolute outrageous stinking lies and but then people some people are invested in this and the longer you go on the harder it is to meet yourself you know um i was a chump i've been had i was fooled by him so it's so embarrassing and so painful to realize you were duped some people would rather carry on deluding themselves than face up to the reality that they were conned anyway so he wants to launch all these legal challenges now some of these may yet succeed but i mean can you can you think of a time when a legal challenge has overturned the result in any state and i can't because even in florida 2000 and the legal battle went on for about a month um uh, george w bush had won that state um so it just didn't carry on the vote the voting counting eventually stopped winning by about 500 votes in Florida. Remember, Al Gore won the popular vote by 0.5%, not the more convincing 3%, which which um, uh, Biden has won by. So remember, Republicans are often um, uh, castigating judicial activism, and that's exactly what they p propose right now, crytarchy, okay? Which, uh, so again, it is yet uh, again, sickeningly hypocritical. So I was worried that three times out of six, the president would be not the one who won the popular vote. You know, 2000, George W. Bush, 2016, Trump. And I thought 2020, Trump again was possible. Fortune didn't happen. But anyway, I've got to remind ourselves that even happening only two, two times out of the last six, the, 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 the loser actually winning, it's not a black swan event. Um, so it's, it's very unfair to the Democrats. It's unfair to Americans generally. So this this current election result is is, is a victory for dem democracy itself, not just the Democrats, because a Trump, who's someone who's um so against democracy, who's so in favour of tyrants, who really um just behaves in an utterly appalling and despicable, unethical manner, who's so completely dishonest and has most of his party at least complicit, if not actively in favour of his outrageous behaviour, and. Yet another disgusting thing is how self-righteous these people are. Often Pharisees on the Republican side, these these um uh, these Christian fundamentalists who are holier than thou, who are so judgmental, puritanical, um, except when it comes to Trump, and he can get away with anything. Uh, the the most blatant lying, almost non-stop, and adultery, and paying off porn stars, and campaign finance violations. With regard to to um, Stormy Daniels, with having so many of his inner circle sent to prison, and they think that's all absolutely fine, with swearing his head off on stage at political rallies, boasting about the size of his penis, with all these credible allegations of sexual assault against women, and they still stick with him. And I know the Democrats are far from perfect. Look at what a scumbag Bill Clinton was, with credible allegations allegations of sexual assault against him. But you know he wasn't a candidate for the presidency these days. I know Joe Biden is flawed. He may well have touched women in an unwanted manner, but none of them said it was criminal in nature. And I know, you know, he's not as uh, sprightly as he used to be. You wouldn't expect that at the age of 77, but he's a lot sharper than Trump. He's not a moron like Trump. Trump who's cheated in really everything in his life, who his niece said even treated, cheated in his college entrance exam, which is completely credible. He's got no ethics at all. I mean, he cannot read on an adult level. That's um, absolutely obvious. How on earth can he have got into a top a university unless by cheating and obviously bribery because, you know, money talks. A lot of these top American universities, you can get in if you have not enough money, even if you're utterly unworthy of admission. So tens of millions of people voting for Trump is, is obviously deeply depressing. And if it were not for coronavirus, Trump would have won. But it was actually quite easy to handle coronavirus. Just do, do what the experts say. And remember, things even rallied to him when coronavirus broke out. People say, we have to support the leader, we can't squabble. So um, Trump has lost, despite peace, prosperity and incumbency. Yes, there are minor conflicts in Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq. He could have ended those. He could have withdrawn already. He hasn't. He said it would defeat ISIS. He didn't. Remember, they would be defeated in a very short time. Yet another promise that he's broken. He's reneged on just so, so many promises. But and despite being betrayed again and again, there are enough very foolish and or malevolent people who voted for him anyway, just because he projects enough hatred against the other. Some guy who's economically illiterate, an absolute loser in every sense, and he's lost billions of dollars, who is not a good businessman, who is no good at negotiating deals, whose really entire life is one whopper of a lie. 
So I really hope to never hear from Trump again, but I think he won't shut up. He'll carry on out there blabbing um, on these Twitter storms. So I think Biden, I need to reach out to Republicans slightly, recognize that many people are concerned about the economy more than are worried about coronavirus. So you've got to take that into account. Biden obviously can't do anything until the 20th of January. So uh, Trump will eventually be carried out there if, if needs be out of there by, by the Secret Service. He might shrug it off and said, I never wanted to win anyway. I wanted to get back to business. And um, fortunately, I think the signs are the military will not be obeying him after 20th of January. They will recognize Joe Biden as, as uh, the commander in chief. Another first, perhaps I should have mentioned sooner, is the first vice president to be a woman. This, and she's obviously partly of African stock, partly of Asian stock. So that's another uh, that's another game changer. Um, Biden, is he going to make it to the end of the first term? Probably a second term. I think it wouldn't be wise to seek a second term. I would imagine retire at that point. He's achieved his life's mission. He's become president. He's rescued the United States from this veil of tears, from this morass of belligerent stupidity, the Trump maladministration. And as the save of his country, his, his place in, in the historical chronicles is secure. And then he could hand over to, to Kamala Harris to stand again. The demographics are moving her way. She'll have peace if she's smart. Prosperity, we're lucky. Incumbency, at least. Quite a good chance she'll win. I think choosing another woman or another ethnic minority person probably be too left field. Probably have to be a white male um, as, as her running mate. There we are. Can't take that from granted, obviously. So, um, you know, Trump uh, is no longer going to be president. But I'm worried that Trumpism is not dead. OK, there are tens of millions of the people, the people out there who supported him and they're not going to change their minds overnight. So, um, you know, he, he won the Republicans at least one presidential election. Now, the Democrats may not get back the Senate or even even have it, even Stevens. Um, but you know what? That's a price worth paying. I know it wasn't a choice either here or, here or there. But if fairy godmother offered me, you can you can get rid of Trump or the Democrats can have the Senate, which I prefer. I prefer to get rid of Trump because um, he is just so ineffably foul that getting rid of this diabolical scoundrel was absolute top priority. He is pestilence. What a mythic man. What a dreadful and baleful influence he's had over the body politic. What an utter disgrace to the United States. I remember reading what John F. Kennedy said the other day, that you judge a country by the men it honours. How on earth can um, such a, um, a repulsive scumbag have been elevated to the highest office in the land? And he's the face of America. That fake tan Fuhrer with, the, with that hair, that obese, lying uh, charlatan, that mountebank, and that's what the United States was judged by. 330 million people, is that the best America can do? Fortunately, they found someone who's far better. Joe Biden, who's got the sort of affability of Ronald Reagan, but at least with a few um, uh, decent policies, who's got a heart in the right place, who's actually a fully paid up member of the human race, a little bit relatable. So I, I wish him um, all the very best. And I think he could become quite popular by restoring a bit of quiet and placidity to the White House and just no Twitter storms in the middle of the night, just one announcement a week. People would appreciate a bit of tranquility. It's, it's been wearisome and draining, this constant raging and ranting by uh, by that um, uh, obnoxious infant uh, called Donald J. Trump. Um, so his sons and a daughter may try and get the, get it, but um, they might even get the nomination next time. But I don't think they'll have the same appeal as Trump did. You know, Trumpism is slightly yesterday's man. Unfortunately, this mind virus, perhaps more dangerous than coronavirus, has not gone away because without Trumpism, the death toll from coronavirus would have been much less. The economy could have reopened way sooner. Someone who's taken the wrong choice just so many times, at least made decisions for the wrong reason. Finally, he's banished. So that is it. I mean, I, I mean, I would love to see him arrested seconds after the inauguration and pro prosecuted for a whole host of charges thrown into super, super max. Sadly, I don't think that that shall transpire. I don't think the Democrats should let him off the hook. So, well, let's bind up the nation's wounds. No, I mean, Republicans need to leave, re relive the trauma and Trump needs to be held account for all his, his crimes uh, in office. He shouldn't be allowed to get away with this. People have got to know in future you can't behave like that and um, and not pay the price. They've got to be repercussions for this gross abuse of office of the emoluments clause, clause and just so, so many other things, ignoring subpoenas. And that's 
the tip of the iceberg. All right, so thank you. Goodbye, everyone. I, I, I go to bed more relieved than um, overjoyed. But yeah, it has been sublime news to see Trump's nose rubbed in humiliation, which he so richly deserves. Toodaloo.